This video demonstrates how to literature search using the database Scopus. First, what is Scopus? Scopus is a citation database run by the publisher Elsevier. This means that the database contains bibliographic information for many references, oftentimes including the abstract. However, it does not have the full text of articles, book chapters, or other resources built within it. Instead, it links out to those resources on the publisher page or through other databases that we subscribe to at the Cook Library. In some cases, you'll find articles that we don't currently subscribe to, but most of the time, you can still get access to those articles by making an interlibrary loan request. Scopus contains information on more than 76 million references, so it's one of the most comprehensive databases that we have access to through the Cook Library. It's best known for research in the sciences, but Scopus contains reference information for sources in every academic discipline, so I encourage you to use it for multidisciplinary topics as well. Now let's take a look at how you search Scopus. First, let's access Scopus through the library homepage. The library homepage is libraries.towson.edu. To get to Scopus, scroll past Cook One Search and click on the teal box on the left that says Databases. Then click on the letter S towards the top of the page and scroll until you find Scopus, then select that. If you're not already logged into the library website, you will be prompted to log in and it's your regular username and password that you use to get into Blackboard or your email. Then you'll be taken to Scopus and you're ready to start searching. I will demonstrate how to do a Scopus search using a sample topic. Let's say that I'm interested in finding research on the inheritance of Tay-Sachs disease. The first thing that you'll notice with the Scopus search is the drop down to the left of the big search box that says search within. This drop down menu will allow you to select where your search terms appear in each Scopus record. By default, article title, abstract, and keywords will be selected. I find that this setting works really well most of the time because if a term is contained in the title, abstract, or keyword section, that means it's probably very important to the main content of that article. However, if you click on the drop down menu, you can see many other options that you may use to be more specific about what it is that you're looking for. But for our demonstration, I'm going to leave that alone and leave article title, abstract, and keyword selected. Then I can move to the search box and start typing in my search terms. In a Scopus search or in any database search, I will have the most success if I split my topic up into the main concepts and use those as search terms rather than typing in a complete sentence or a question. For this topic, I have two main concepts, Tay-Sachs disease and inheritance. So I'll start with Tay-Sachs disease. I can type that in and I'm going to stick it in quotation marks. That's going to tell the database to search for Tay-Sachs disease as a complete phrase, so it will only find resources that use those words right next to each other. Then, since I know that Tay-Sachs disease is sometimes abbreviated as TSD, I can use that as an option for a search term as well. I will type in the word OR and then TSD, and that's going to tell Scopus to find articles, book chapters, or other resources that use either the phrase Tay-Sachs disease or the acronym TSD. Now let's move on to our second main concept, which is inheritance. Since I have two main concepts here, I'd like to have two search boxes. I can get a second search box by going to the bottom left and clicking on add search field. You'll notice that a new drop-down menu appeared in between search boxes, which says AND. If I keep this selected, which I'm going to do here, that will tell Scopus to find materials that use something from my first search box and something from my second search box. So only materials that have something from both should appear on my results list. Now I can type in terms related to inheritance. So I'm going to start by typing in inherit and stick an asterisk on the end. The asterisk tells the database to search for all possible endings of that word. So I could find articles that say inherit 
inherited, inheritance, or anything that starts with those letters. Then in this case as well, I can think of other ways that an author might refer to the concept of inheritance or think of other closely related terms and add those with or. So I'll type in the word or and then I could try hereditary since that's a similar concept or I could even try genetic in this case since I'm interested in the genetic components of this particular disease. It may take some trial and error to come up with the right search terms for every topic. So I suggest searching more than once and playing around with different search terms in order to get the best search results. Now I'm almost ready to search, but there's one more option that I may want to select for my topic, and that would be the date range. Underneath the search boxes, click on add date range, and that will allow you to select articles that were published in a certain time frame or that were added to this database in a specific time frame. When I'm searching, most of the time I leave this the way it is, where it finds articles published in all years. However, if you're ever looking for research that's really current, or maybe you have an assignment where you've been told that you can only use articles published within the last five years, you can click on the Published From dropdown to select a specific year. So if I wanted things from 2010 onwards, for example, I could click on 2010. And now when I search, I will only get articles that were published within that particular time frame. All right, now we're ready to search. So I will click on the blue search button at the bottom right and we will be taken to our results page. Here is my Scopus results page. If you look at the top left corner, you can see the number of results that I obtained from my search. In this case, 446. I definitely don't have time to read through all of those just for one project, but fortunately, Scopus gives us a lot of options that we can use to help us find the most useful resources more quickly. First, look at this results section of the page on the right, and at the top right hand corner, look at the drop down that says sort on. By default, date newest is selected. This means that Scopus has put my results in order from the most recently published item to the oldest item. Since I have a lot of results to look through, I am going to select this drop down menu and choose relevance instead. That's going to reorder my results and put the ones that use my search terms the most towards the top of the list. So in theory, the most useful resources are going to appear close to the top of the list so that I won't have to scroll through many pages of results to find those few really great articles that are related to my topic. I can also make some adjustments to my results list through this refine results column on the left side of the page. There are a lot of different options here that you can play around with in your own research, but I'll point out a couple in particular that you might find useful. First, year. Let's say that you forgot to set a publication year before you searched, or maybe after scanning through your results, you realized that a lot of them were really old and that you want to make that adjustment after the fact. So let's say I changed my mind and I really just want articles published from 2017 and beyond. I can check the box ne next to each of those years, and unfortunately I have to select them all individually this time. Then, in order for this change to take effect, I have to scroll either to the top or the bottom of this refine results column on the left, and then select the limit to box. So that will update my results and remove anything that was not published within those years that I selected. Another useful filter option we have on the left, if you scroll a little bit, is document type. This will allow you to select the type of source that you need for your research. If you're being asked to find primary literature or original research articles, you will want to select the box next to article. If you're able to use a literature review, so something that's not generally considered a primary source but is rather summarizing scholarly research, you could select the review box as well. So depending on the restrictions you have for your project or your assignment or where you're at in the research process, you may find it useful to select different options here. 
let's say I really am just interested in primary research at this point, I will make sure that article is selected and then I will scroll to the bottom this time, click on limit to, and now I should just have a list of original research articles. Okay, so now that I've made a few adjustments that might help me find useful research, I can start looking through my results page. We can see the title is listed for each result, as well as the authors, the year of publication, the source, so typically what academic journal it's in, and then also the number of times that an article has been cited. This can be interesting to look at to give you an idea of how impactful an article has been within the field. Of course, you do have to keep in mind when something was published when evaluating this information, since something published in the, the most recent year or within the past couple years has not had enough time to be read and incorporated into other researchers' studies as well. But if you find something that's a few years old and you see it has a lot of citations, that suggests that it could be a particularly useful article. So keep that in mind as you're scrolling through your results. Then if you find a result that looks like it may be useful to you, you can get some more information about it by clicking on the View Abstract option underneath the title. That will bring up an abstract, which is a short description of the article, and your search terms will be highlighted to give you a better idea of how useful it may be for your research. If you read through the abstract and decide that you want to read the full article, you can check for access options by clicking on the yellow Find It button. This will take you to another page, it will open in a different tab, and if it's something that the Cook Library has access to, you will see one or more links that say read full text at, and then the name of a different database we subscribe to. For this one we have several access options, so I could click on any one of them to get to the article. So I'll click on read full text at Springer link just for demonstration purposes. And then here you can see that I have the full text of the article here, just right within my browser. Or if I wanted to download the PDF, I have that option at the top right hand corner as well. Sometimes on this find it page, instead of read full text links, you'll see a message that says not available online. Don't panic in that case, because the library can still get it for you 99% of the time, you just need to request it through interlibrary loan. This service is free, and it usually takes about a day or two for articles to arrive. To request something from interlibrary loan, click on the request it link, and the first time that you use it, you'll be asked to set up an account. Once you have an account, then you should be taken to a page that looks like what I have on my screen now, where you have a form with information about the article pre-filled in for you. So the only thing that you need to do is scroll to the bottom and click on Submit Request. Then, within a day or two, you should get an email from the library saying that your article is ready with instructions for how to download it. So definitely take advantage of interlibrary loan to get access to any articles that we don't have. Let's take another look at our results page and I'll share some additional tips for finding other articles. If you scroll through your results list and find an article that's particularly useful to you, instead of just going to the yellow find it button and immediately accessing the article, saving it and being done with it, you can click on the title to get more information and links to other articles that are related and could potentially be useful in your research as well. At the top right hand corner of an article page on Scopus, you'll see this metrics box, which gives you some information about how impactful that article has been in the field. So how frequently it's been cited, and then this percentile and this field weighted citation impact number, these are ways of measuring how frequently cited this article was in comparison to other articles in the same area of research. So you can look at that to get an idea of how impactful an article was. Then if you scroll further and look at the next section on the right side of the screen, you'll see which documents have cited this one. So these are other records in Scopus that have referenced this particular work. If you click on any one of those, you'll get to the same type of page for that particular article, and then you could use that yellow Find It button at the top left in order to access it. 
then if I go back to the article I was just looking at, there are a few additional things that may help you out as well. If you scroll even further, you'll see a related document section. These are ones that haven't necessarily cited this work, but used similar keywords in them and are likely on topics that are similar to the article that you're looking at. So those can also be useful articles for you. Then if you scroll even further, at the very bottom on the left, you'll see a list of references. These are other studies that were cited in the article that you're looking at. And here you can click on the title to get to that same article page that we're seeing now, or you can click on the Find It button directly from this section to see what your access options are. Thank you for watching. If you have questions, the Cook Library is happy to help. Visit bit.ly slash tu ask a librarian for details on how to contact a librarian through chat, email, text message, or individual appointment.